Welcome to today's 5-Minute Bible Study. Today we are beginning a new study, a study in the Gospel of Matthew. Now, as you know, of course, Matthew is the first book of the New Testament and the first of the four Gospels. We have four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when you turn to the New Testament, Matthew stands first in the order. Because in so many respects, Matthew is, I suppose, the most popular of the four Gospels. Now, we love all four of the Gospels, don't misunderstand me. Uh, but I think because Matthew is the first one uh, in our New Testament order, it is, in, in many respects, I, I suppose, the most popular and, and I guess, the best known. Uh, but be that as it may, we're going to look carefully at Matthew for the next uh, several weeks together as we journey through this study and see what Matthew teaches us about Jesus and how he communicates to us the gospel. Now, you know, the gospel simply means good news. So the gospel of Matthew is the good news about Jesus according to Matthew. Now, one of the first things I want to say by way of introduction is that we believe that the Gospel of Matthew was written by Matthew, one of the original 12 apostles. Now, this is not in the text itself, you understand. If you read the Gospel of Matthew, it does not say in the text that Matthew wrote it. But the strong tradition of the early church, from the earliest years of the church, was that this Gospel comes to us from Matthew. And I see no reason to doubt the tradition of the early church. They all felt that it was written by Matthew, and I believe it is. So we call it the gospel according to Matthew because the early church fervently believed that it was written by the apostle Matthew. Now you know that Matthew was also called by another name in the New Testament. He was sometimes called by the name Levi. Levi. There's another interesting thing about Matthew or Levi. Before Jesus called him, he was a tax collector. He was a tax collector. Now, in New Testament times, tax collectors were hated folks. People did not like the tax collector because they worked for the Romans. Matthew, of course, was Jewish, but he was in the employ of the Roman oppressors. And it was his job to collect their taxes. So people hated him because of that. Because he not only collected taxes for the Romans, but he was in league with the Romans who were their oppressors. Oftentimes you find a certain phrase in the Bible that says, tax collectors and sinners. Because that's the way they view them. It's almost a synonym. To be a tax collector is to be a sinner. You remember that when Jesus first called Matthew or Levi, he approached him at his tax collector's booth and said, why don't you come and follow me? Matthew did. He left behind that life he had been living in the employ of the Romans as a collector of their taxes. He left that behind and began to follow Jesus. And one of the first things Matthew did was he called together his friends to meet Jesus and they had a, a dinner and Jesus went to that dinner. Of course, all of Matthew's friends were other tax collectors. Nobody else would be his friend. <laughs> Most of the, his, his compatriots hated him because he was. So his only friends would be tax collectors. So when he had a dinner with his friends, that's who came, the other tax collectors. And the scripture says the Pharisees asked the question, why does Jesus eat with people like this, tax collectors and sinners? But you know, Matthew became a great man of God showing that the gospel is for everyone. Even tax collectors in New Testament times could be saved by the grace of Jesus. Even those the society considered sinners could be saved by the grace of Jesus, and Matthew was. He was a tax collector, but he became an apostle of Jesus because of the grace of Jesus. Now, when you read through the gospel of Matthew, you're going to see how meticulously organized it is. And we'll talk about this as we make our study, but it is very carefully organized by Matthew to communicate the good news about Jesus. We're going to look at some of that organization, but I think this comes from his background. He was a tax collector, and so he was organized in how he approached things and how he kept his, his mind straight. He was a very organized person, and that organization is seen in the way he presents his gospel. Also, we know that Matthew wrote his gospel 
probably around the year AD 65 to 70. That's what the evidence seems to indicate. Now this is over three decades after the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. We believe that Jesus was crucified and resurrected in the year AD 30. And so Matthew wrote this gospel, put his account together some 35 to almost 40 years after the events. By now, Matthew is an old man. He is approaching the end of his earthly pilgrimage. And he wants to make sure that his memory of Christ and what he's been preaching all these years as he tells the story of Jesus is now put into writing. He writes it in a written form so that his recollection, his memory of all Jesus said, all Jesus did, all Jesus taught would be preserved for the coming ages as it has been. And so thankfully, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Matthew put his memory of Jesus into writing. And so we have the Gospel of Matthew. And so in these coming weeks, in our five-minute studies, we're going to be looking at the Gospel as Matthew told it to us. From his time with Jesus, how he carefully organized the material, all of his memories of Jesus, how the Spirit helped him use his skills of organization to communicate effectively the Gospel, the good news of Jesus. So I hope you'll join us every day uh, for this five-minute study as we look at how Matthew tells us the good news about Jesus. We'll be studying the gospel according to Matthew. You join us for this study. You have a great day today, and I'll see you next time as we jump into our study of the gospel of Matthew. See you then.